All right, everyone. Welcome back. And this is a uh, this is a video on um, equilibrium equations and then stat, you know, determinacy and stability, which is you know, determining if a structure is statically determinate or statically indeterminate um, or or unstable. Okay. And 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 what we're going to do here, the objectives of this video is is describe the equilibrium equations and then um, and then talk about what this you know how to, how to identify whether or not a structure is determinate or statically indeterminate, and this is this would be a precursor to a a structural analysis course in mechanical or civil engineering if you have you know complex structures and I guess even in bio and aerospace engineering as well, and so here you got uh, uh, if you if you will let's just start with the equilibrium equations so you you've probably seen these equilibrium equations before equilib equations and and you've seen these in statics and mechanics where you have you know you're probably shown in vector form some of the forces equal to zero and some of the moments equals zero this is the sum equal to zero indicates it's static or at or at rest meaning the structure doesn't move okay it doesn't move other than small deformations but it's not dynamic it's not a dynamic system and and what you have here, depending on the coordinate system you chose, and in this, in a lot of the cases, you chose a Cartesian x, y, z, and each, of, and in that case, and this represented three equations: some of the forces in the x, some of the forces in the y, uh, some of the forces in the z, and as well as here, this represented three equations. And what you had in a system to be, uh, you know, three, you essentially had three force equations and three moment equilibrium equations, and and that was it. And then in in a two D structure. In a 2D structure, a 2D problem, where there's only uh, uh, essentially all you have in it is an x, y coordinate system like this, and you had some of the forces in the x equal to zero, uh, some of the forces in the y equal to zero, and the sum of the moments about the z equal to zero. Z coming out of the page here, and uh, uh, this is rotations about z here. So we're using a right hand rule, bam, these were. You know, you did you did stuff like this, and this is how you solve law statics problems. And another important part of this was a positive sign convention. Um, let's see, sign convention. So if you had a, a something to remember here and recall is in positive sign convention is you had a structural component, whatever that would be, with some sort of external uh, reactions or loading of some kind. Okay, right here. And when you made a cut through a point here and you separated this right here, drew this free body diagram, if you will, and just to make sure that we're consistent, bam, right here like this. On the inside, in turn, all these, these, these forces and moments and distributed loads in red were, were external loading. And on the inside, what was going on in, again, in a 2D planar system, you had a a positive internal shear that you drew downwards this way, a positive moment here, and a positive axial force. Okay, so you had this MVN, sometimes use a P, that's how I remember it, MVP, as in like most valuable player, but this in this case would be most valuable internal loading. Ah, anyway, all right, so here, and then on the other side of this cut right here, looking at both sides of the cut, this again was positive. All this was positive, positive internal force, a positive moment, and then positive shear pointing upward. And this was our positive sign convention. So no matter what the lo external loading is, when you go and make a cut and do a free body diagram, if you look at the left side of that cut, you'd want your positive shear to point downward, N, positive N causing tension on this surface, and then moment, a positive moment would be considered a moment that causes compression at the top, tension at the bottom. And then here, here again, it, for you have equal and opposite, if you will, at the, this cut right here. And, you know, these internal loadings represent all the, you know, like the grains of the, of the material, the steel or, or, the, or the tendons or, I don't know, the muscle fibers within a muscle or, or you know, it's just the resultant force, you know, axial force, shear, and moment of all the things that are physically connecting the structure together, okay, that are actually connecting the structure together. All right, so if you got a good feel for this, then, you know, you, you're, you're probably set. If you need a review, and it's always good to review, you know, it, maybe go back and look at some of my videos on mechanics and statics 
or go hit up your old textbook or something, whatever. So there's a bunch of videos on YouTube on this stuff. All right. But here, now that we're, we're, we've gone on, you understand there's equilibrium equations and it's positive sign convention, we're ready to move on and talk about some, some statically determinate or determinacy. How do you determine if a structure is statically determinate, uh, indeterminate, or, and, or unstable? Okay, so determinacy. And here we'll just, you know, stability. And I'll say stability. Ah, stability. Why not? Okay, it's not the full-fledged structural stability that, that's very complex or anything. But, but here, you know, in 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 basic definitions, it's that the num if if I have the number of reactions, okay, the number of reactions equals the number of equations equations here, then my structure is statically determinate. Okay, so for instance, you know, I'm gonna do something really simple here. If I have a simply supported beam, bam. Roller right here, and I have here, I got one, two, three. These are my three reactions. You might have drawn, drawn these as like AY, AX, BY, and I've got a bunch of loads going on right here. There's some distributed load that's known. This is known already. But here I have number of reactions is three, and in a 2D sense, the number of equations I have to meet, I have available to me for in a planar structure like this, I have three equilibrium equations. I have three equilibrium equations and therefore this is statically determinate, okay? If I have, if my number of reactions is greater than my number of equilibrium equations, then I am statically indeterminate. I have redundant forces. I've got to use you know, it's not, my equilibrium equations are not enough. I have to use some more advanced techniques that you would learn in structural analysis that you're going to learn here, okay, in much later videos, right? But here, you know, so an example of a statically indeterminate structure would be something like, bam, like this right here. And I have, let's make this fixed and we'll make it, oh, why not? Let's make it fixed, fixed, a fixed, fixed beam. And here I might have some, you know, moment at a, the vertical a y a x and then here b y b x and a moment at b all these reactions here going on and here in this case there's some loading let's put some loading here bam okay so some known loading there but here my number of reactions is here is six i have one two three four five six reactions and the number of equilibrium equations i have available to me is three and so what this means is I am statically indeterminate to the third degree. The third degree. Okay. Third degree. All right. And so here, that, that means I would need three additional equations to solve this problem, to solve for all the reactions and, and then eventually draw my shear moment diagrams and determine stresses and then design and determine if my, my structure is going to break. Statically, um, so here, now the question would be, what happens, I'm sure you're all thinking right now, what happens if my number of reactions is less than my number of equilibrium equations? And what that would mean is, Let's take, for instance, this simply supported beam again, okay? Okay, uh, and this simply supported beam right here, if I take off, let's say here, I make this a roller, so I remove one reaction, I may keep this a roller right here, okay? Bam, bam, like this right here, and I have loading going like this right here. This is my known load. And then if I were to apply an axial load P here, or some force P pushing or pulling on the side of this right here, I would eventually, I would have a dynamic system. My, I, this thing would start moving into, off into space. It would not be stable anymore. This would be unstable, unstable, okay, unstable. I have only two unknowns or two, my number of equal uh, reactions is two. My number of equilibrium equations equals three, okay? And, but you can see here also how if I didn't have this load, I could still, the structure might work. But in any case, this is a statically, I'm sorry, this is an unstable structure because if we have a, a force applied in the horizontal direction, this thing would just start moving and be a dynamic system. All right. Another another example would be if I if I introduced a hinge. Oops. Another case would be if I introduced a hinge right here, a hinge 
and a hinge right here. Bam. And to this simply supported beam right here. And this would be a release and, and everything, my structure would just collapse. It would it would it would rotate down right here and rotate down like this and it would just it would collapse. It, it's it's statically it would be this is a release here that we're gonna talk about how to deal with hinges in a second. But uh, um but for now, hopefully I, I've given you an introduction, a feel for what, what it means for something to be statically determinate and statically indeterminate and how the equilibrium equations feel come you know uh, are involved with it and then the next video maybe i'll do something a little bit more uh, i'll do some more examples of determining statically indeterminate and indeterminate systems and then uh, and then maybe uh following that we'll do some stuff on you know calculating reactions of some some frames and things all right okay let me know if you have any questions take it easy bye